me start talking to you. Uh, why? We are, we are uh, uh, in a very interesting world where a uh, lot of new innovations, including the, the new segment, Internet of Things that we are discussing today. Till now, if you see our uh, interactions with in Internet, is primarily towards accessing the information or some kind of data, pictures, video, things of that sort. This is all logical access to the information. That information can be So yeah, like all my previous uh, speakers spoke, there are a lot of interesting things that are happening in the internet world. As of recently, we have been using internet for accessing the data, information, pictures, videos, things, things of that type. It's not, it's not full, they show it up. Okay, anyway. And uh, yeah. So we have been using the internet to, to access the data, emails, personalized information, social networks, financial services. Now we are also getting into things like medical records and that kind of stuff. The, all that has been logical access of the information from the computers, tablets, PCs, and that kind of stuff. Now we are entering into new era of the world like all my predecessors said, the smart grid, smart home, smart car, all these things. If you see all these things, just like in the logical side that we have, the personalization of the data, personalization of the user, who is on the other side, who is accessing the data? Who is the, on the other side of the device that is actually uploading the data? The wearables that we are talking about with respect to medical data and this kind of stuff, you do not necessarily want to take your son's data and upload it to yourself, and or your data to your son. If you see the evolution that's happening these days, and uh, it, that's also on the home front. People turn on and off their security systems from their office. People turn on and off their thermostats from homes, I mean, from offices. This kind of evolution is happening, and we are using internet in a very interesting way, which we haven't been using till now before. If you've seen all these things, one of the things that is key that we have not been addressing right now is the identity security, privacy, and personalization. Without these things being addressed, every other homogeneous, heterogeneous environment that we are in, everybody is evolving devices. Everybody is going to evolve devices the way they want to do. For all these things, if you don't know who is on the other side of the device that is operating either to access the data or turn on the device, we are moving from logical access of the information into physical access of operating devices. In this new evolving world, if we really don't secure the internet, secure the person who is operating, or provide the privacy that is required for the data, we are going to go into very uh, chaotic world going forward. And if you really want to provide the identity and the security of the world, the infrastructure that is providing identity security till today, as, of, as we speak today, is not going to scale properly. How do we authenticate ourselves to the systems these days? Every one of them is based off of a user ID or a password or a PIN. This is how we authenticate ourselves. Whether to access it even in a home computer, your, the personalization preferences are different from, than your son's. In a car, that is speaking the uh, satellite radio, your channels are different than your son's channels. How do you control these things? How do you know who is actually operating this? If all of that is being operated and sorted as it has been conventionally being done for the last 50 years, which is user ID and password, we are actually running towards a, towards a train wreck. If you see recent online identity attacks, whether it is you know, the identity theft or somebody going and attacking you know, some, uh, stealing something. All of that online fraud or internet fraud is directly related to somebody stealing your password. Somebody steals your password, goes from there. You have seen recent e attacks on eBay, Evernote. These are the some of the numbers that are out there today. 
The close to 270 to 280 billion dollars worth of online fraud that's happening today is directly related to somebody who's playing the password. When we are going and evolving ourselves into Internet of Things, which is going to be a very heterogeneous environment, if we don't fix the problem of security, identity, and protection, privacy of the data, we are going to be in a very big problem. It's not like for it's not like there are no solutions that are fixing the problem. You have solutions. All the solutions that are existing today are very complex. They're proprietary. They are they don't care because all of them are based off of a user ID, a password, or somebody giving you a physical USB token, or a smart card, or something that you have to do unnaturally to be able to actually authenticate or identify yourself to the network. This has been the consistent, you know, the trend of the market. This is the, has been the consistent trend of the security. That is part of the reason security industry has been very fragmented last 50 years. It hasn't been fixed till now. Even today, you do not have a consumer-based or consumer-scale authentication that's available in the market. There is none today. And that can actually work and interoperate and provide the scale that is required, particularly when you're moving towards Internet of Security. We are going from the time and the place where we are actually using the Internet and access, accessing devices from logical access. We are actually going towards lifestyle changes. How do we do wealth and fitness? How do we do medical records upload? How do we pay in a Starbucks? The lifestyle is changing right now. In all these things that you see, authentication is the building block. If you do not authenticate either a device that is asking some other device to start on and off, or a user which is actually operating the device, if you don't fix that problem, whether you're authenticating a user to a device or a device to device, user to service, you got to fix the problem on the security and authentication and privacy. <coughs> Conventionally, if you really want to provide a very, very easy to use security solution, password is one, two, three, four, five. Easiest, but it's also most insecure. And on the other side, you have highly secure systems. They will send you an SMS, they will get a USB token, they will ask, call your next door neighbor, they will do all kinds of unnatural things. When they do that kind of stuff, highly secure but very difficult to use. What you need, if we really want to go provide a safe internet world, what we need is easy to use, and we need to have a stronger security. This is where we need to be. We have been there, or we have been here. We need to be here. What is needed? What we need is, the world is going to be a continuously in a heterogeneous environment, there are new technologies that are going to come, new platforms are going to come, new devices are going to come, new authentication processes are going to come. If you see Apple's step forward leadership on the fingerprint sensors about how to detect the user, how to identify the user, Samsung followed the, the course, the Galaxy S5, now has fingerprint sensor. So if, and then you have iris scanners coming up, you have speaker recognition stuff coming up, one of my earlier speakers was talking about speaking to a shoe, speaker recognition. When you see all these things, other than user ID password, there are good, very good technologies that are coming up. They are very secure. They actually can assertively identify who is on the other side of the person who is actually asking it. Identity is becoming strong right now. The technologies are available. Technologies are coming to a shape where they are reliable, cost effective, ready to be produced, in a, ready to be deployed in a mass scale. That's what is needed in the market. So when we started thinking about how to fix this problem, we wanted to actually see if somebody gives us a clean slate, how do we want to address the security problem? Is this going to be another way of uh, whatever IBM created with time sharing options with the, with the, with the user ID password? Is that what we're going to stop and build on top of that? We said, no, we're not going to do that. So what we said was, how about if we, somebody gives a clean slate and if we start thinking out of the box, how is, the, how is this authentication process going to evolve? So myself and Michael Barrett, who is the CISO of PayPal, who was the CISO of PayPal, and Tahar al -Gamal, he was the inventor of SSL, a chief scientist at Netscape, and Phil Dunkelberg, our, our CEO. We are what the found for the visionaries behind what FIDO Alliance is today. And uh, 
We actually started this entire effort back in 2009 to actually set up this, uh, defining the spec of how to do authentication. 2012, February, during RSA, we have announced this FIDO Alliance. It's a non-profit organization, standards body, actually defining how authentication should be done in the market. We started this out with about six founding members, included PayPal, Lenovo, Validity, our CTO at the time, and this is what we started with. 12 months from now, from, from then, 2013 to 2014, there are 125 companies now today in the FIDO Alliance saying this is the way authentication needs to happen. This is the way the users need to be authenticated to your device. Device needs to be authenticated to your server. Server needs to be authenticated to server. These are some of the players that are in the FIDO Alliance now. You have Microsoft, Google, PayPal, Tech from Taiwan. We have uh, uh, GoTrust from Taiwan. ARM is part of that. If you see this map, including Microsoft, everybody is participating in this protocol right now. We have been very active, and the financial organization, we have MasterCard, Visa, American Express, everybody is participating in FIDO Alliance, saying this is the way to go. So FIDO Alliance and Knock Knock Labs, I just want to take one slide briefly, I'm the founder of Knock Knock Labs too. I'm just going to say what's the difference between FIDO Alliance and Knock Knock Labs. FIDO Alliance is a non-profit organization that has about 130 members, right, 125 plus members right now. We have uh, uh, highly performing uh, uh, board and governance and everything out there. And we also have uh, you know, different working groups, technology, marketing groups and stuff. The charter of FIDO Alliance is actually defining the spec advancing the spec and bringing more and more players into the picture for this open standard about how an authentication security needs to be done. Knock Knock Labs happens to be the first implementer and they have the FIDO ready products that are being used today. So what's different about FIDO? What's different about FIDO is you actually authenticate yourself to your device. Device then authenticates back to the server. You never actually directly go to the server right away. The way that happens is, whenever you're using a device, talking to a backend service, you register to the backend service with that particular device, with any of the authenticators that's available on the device. Because the world is going to be hetero completely heterogeneous environment. It's going to have Microsoft, it's going to have Google, it's going to have iOS. Now, Samsung came up with Kaizen. You, that's, about, that's going to evolve. Some machines are going to have fingerprint sensors, some machines are going to have camera, image scanner, some of some certain things are going to have speaker recognition. Some, some of the things may just have simply pin as usual earlier. How do you fit with all these things? You cannot say any standard, any technology that you want to bring to the table of this scale, you never want to say that I will only work from time t equals zero and then going forward. What do you do with X billion number of you know, devices that are out there that also need to be authenticated and secured? So our view is, we will take whatever you got, whether, whether you're a PC or cell phone tablet, you tell us what you got. Part of the FIDO spec is to inform the relying party at the backend service what this device is capable of. The user will then be allowed to register himself with that device to that service saying, okay, I'm going to use fingerprint sensor. And then during that process, it, there will be keys, asymmetric keys that get generated, both get seated on both sides. And the way that you authenticate is you authenticate to the local device, and then the response between the backend service and the device happens based on challenge and response that changes every single time when user needs to be authenticated. So that you primarily eliminate the process of authentication and device to the backend service. This is what is different about uh, the FIDO approach. It, it covers the all the install base too. It's more secure. Why? Today, in, in, the, in the current world, if everybody is going to, if a single site like eBay gets compromised, you have a few hundred millions of passwords that are available for the hacker. He can go take those things. Most of us, whether we like, like it or not, out of 20, 25 accounts that we have, we typically use over two to three passwords is what we use. We reuse all those passwords. I use the same, I mean, in, in common users, if they use the same password that I, I love pizza.com on their Wells Fargo bank, if I love pizza.com is compromised, Wells Fargo has your password too. Then you're compromised, both sides. So if you see this thing, the way that we operate is user authenticates to the device, device authenticates to the backend service. By doing this kind of stuff, 
the, during the registration process, every service that the user is going after with the device will have separate set of keys. Even the user does not know that. What kind of keys, where are they stored, how are they stored, even the user does not know. The handshake completely happens. You are completely eliminating the man in the middle attack because you're not transmitting any passwords anywhere. You are completely eliminating the phishing attacks, no passwords involved, key loggers, no. There are no global attacks on this thing. Now, Fido, or, there won't be global attacks because if somebody goes back and then attacks a back-end server, all they see is a bunch of public keys. And those, each of those public keys is related to a particular device. So it's not enough if you hack a eBay and get 200 million passwords. You also need to go and then steal those 200 million devices to actually you know, have a scalable attack on top of that. This is what's different about FIDO authentication. It's future proof. Today, Apple has put fingerprint sensor. Samsung has put fingerprint sensor. Tomorrow, that fingerprint sensor might do something else more than a fingerprinting. Maybe it will do DNA or your pulse rate. As a person who is sitting on the other side of the wire, trying to authenticate you, now I have different, uh, a stronger authenticator that's available on the field, which I have no information about. FIDO actually eliminates that dependency for the line parties and the backend people there. Tomorrow, if there is going to be a new device that's coming, and the new device is going to have a new authentication model, FIDO completely future proofs the user and the backend service. They can take advantage of the new uh, security authenticators that are available and then simply go from there. It's reduced complexity. Any new technologies that we bring to the table, if it is going to be very difficult to use, that's part of the reason some of the security technologies that are out there haven't been taken off yet because they are simply not scalable and they are not easy to use. What you need to do is to, you have to have any devices that should be able to use this protocol. All of them have to have the single infrastructure. I do not want to have my backend infrastructure where I say, if you're coming from PC, use RSA token. I'm going to give you a better security. If you're coming from cell phone, use something else. I have to have different security profiles and different infrastructure on the back end to support that. Tomorrow, somebody else comes up with a new authentication model. There is no way I can support it. This is what FIDO is going to transform, transform and then provide the platform for the people. Like I said, if usability is not fixed, you're not going to go anywhere. Part of the reason companies like, you know, if, 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 if no technology is going to be successful if it is not usable. It could be a single touch, it could be a single click, or it could be a single phrase, or it could be a single blink, it doesn't matter. If you see the kind of evolution that's happening, even the kind of stuff that we're, the, one, the gentleman from Bartcom was showing a, 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 a T-shirt having the, uh, a patch here, which is going to be identity. And if the identity is not tied to properly to the actual user, how are you going to identify that my son wears, wears the shirt and he, his data gets transmitted? You want to avoid that. You want to make sure in the new world that we are entering into where we are actually transforming from logical services even to the physical services, physical devices, device turning on, a media gateway. I want to start it from the office and that will go and do something else at home. So I do not want my next door neighbor turning off my thermostat night 12 o'clock during winter. I do not want to. I want to make sure that these things are done properly, and if we don't fix the authentication, security, privacy problem, identity problem now, IoT is going to evolve just like the way security industry has evolved till now. We got to put a stop to that. We need to make sure that the evolution of new processes that we are coming to, it could be smart city, smart infrastructure, smart home. I keep changing channels on my son's uh, television set. He's upstairs. I'd be sitting in downstairs and living, and he had changing channels. He gets confused who's changing them. We need to make sure the personalized content, personalized preferences, we got to know who is on the other side of the line. And FIDO, while it was announced and it was open to public only in 2013, it, unlike any other standards bodies that have been started multiple years, multiple times before, this is not something that is vaporware. FIDO-ready products are available today in the market. Today in the market, these are some of the products that have been uh, you know, demoed in various uh, segments uh, in, in the last year. Uh, this, is very, this is another unique thing about FIDO Alliance. We are actually putting out FIDO-ready products in the market while we are actually developing the spec at the same time. And that's very unique to FIDO Alliance. 
Fido lands, uh, the Fido ready products are on Samsung Galaxy S5. If you go to PayPal today, you don't use password. Use Galaxy S5, use PayPal, no passwords involved. A single, single swipe experience will get you to the transit transactions. Lenovo is another company, has been leader, the founding member, and those have been participating in Fido for a number of years. ThinkPad that you go and buy today has Fido products out there. Now, between uh, Samsung and uh, um, you know, Lenovo taking leadership, we are really going to, you know, this is a great momentum for, a comp for, a, for an alliance and a standards body, which is just about a year, year old. The products already being there is, is a huge success for the, for the organization. So with that, I'm going to just say a few words about, you know, call to action. Authentication is the most fundamental problem as we are transforming the internet from logical access to the physical access. Not only logical access to the physical access, the personalization. When you go to Facebook, you have different personalizations. When you want to go, when you want to go with CTV channels, you have personalization. You will, anything that you want to do within a family, there is personalization. If we do not address the problem of security, authentication, and privacy, similarly, like I was mentioning earlier, wearable technologies, very new gadgets, very nice gadgets are coming together. If I have an ECG monitor, I don't want my son to just take it, stick it, and go somewhere. If, if I'm using a chronic disease kind of a thing, you need, really need to not only make sure who is actually using the device, you also need to make sure privacy protection is there. You know, you do not, do not want to keep dumping the data on the cloud without knowing to whom it believes, I mean, who, who it belongs to, and who actually wants that. Authentication is a very fundamental problem. It needs attention. It needs to be fixed. And there has been a great step that has been taken by Fido Alliance. Every company except Apple is part of the organization now. And no one company can fix this problem. Not a single company in the world can fix this authentication problem. You take any of the players that are out there, they are not, none of them are more than 20%. So this is, a, this is a problem where the all industry players will have to come together. They have to fix it together. There, this actually, because it's an open standard, earlier we were also talking about speakers, great, great speakers, talking about how the heterogeneous, how heterogeneous the environment is. The, some of the connectivity standards have been done well, with NFC, Bluetooth, these kind of things. But what do you do with the actual identification authentication? You don't want to, a wearable here, you do not want to have a complicated things that you want to do to authenticate yourself and send the data up. You don't want to store the data that is coming from a Samsung wearable differently than what's coming from, from a, a, a Google's glasses. You got to make sure you have to have security, identity, privacy. These are the three things that you need to, basic building block, if you, if, if you want to really evolve the Internet of Things properly and make sure we don't mess it up. We have to have this fixed right away. Take the leadership, opportunity to create new services, new market, new innovations, just like whatever, what, yeah, how IoT is going to create more and more opportunities. We, I want to make sure, while we are creating more and more opportunities with IoT, we also don't make it more and more confusion in the market, just like what happened in the security industry for the last 50 years. Take the leadership, include the support in your products. If you do not have enough bandwidth to include support, Use the people who have already done that, leverage. Leverage, leverage. Take the product, see if you can work with the people who are actually working in, 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 the, in the FIDO alliance already. FIDO commercial, commercially available products, like I said, are available. They are in the market as we speak. Leverage them. Make the, please join, help FIDO alliance fix the problem. And make the connected world private, secure, and more stable. And make sure when we are online, we can stay connected in a safe manner. With that, Thank you very much.